Hi, I'm Elizabeth Esterly, and I'm here today to get you started with R. So just a little bit of background about me. So I am an artist and a scientist in equal measure. I did my undergrad degree in fine art at Northern Illinois University. And after that, I traveled the world for several years as a tattoo artist. But along the way, I fell in love with computers and programming. And I decided to pursue that passion. And that led me here to the University of New Mexico, where I am a computer science graduate student. So my two fields of interest here are machine learning and data visualization. In both of those fields, I use R. And both of these fields are very cutting edge. That's why I'm here today to talk to you about R. R is very cross-disciplinary. You don't need to be a computer scientist to learn it. And you too can take part in really cutting edge research, data visualization, or just finding a way to tell a coherent story with data that you have. So let's jump in and get started with R. I'm going to teach you today how to install it on your very own system. So let's go. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Esterly. I'm here in the bottom corner of the video. And today, I'm going to be guiding you through downloading the R programming language for your computer and also installing R Studio, which is a development environment for R. Both of these tools are free. And we're just going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of an installation on a Mac desktop computer. Um, if you have a Mac laptop, this will also apply to you. Also, if you have a Windows machine, I'm going to point you in the right direction for how to install R on a Windows machine as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Looking at the page I have up here, you can see it's rproject.org, and this is going to be where we're going to install the R language from. And how to get to this particular page is just in your address bar or your search engine, just go ahead and search for download R. So let's do download R and R is our first result. That'll take us right back to rproject.org. So to download the language itself, we're going to go to the CRAN site. So click here. And it's the Comprehensive R Archive Network. So it's a system of mirrors where the download material is hosted at a bunch of different universities who are hosting the language for us, which is super cool. So let's go ahead and pick a location that's fairly near to us. Um, I tested this one earlier. It's working great. So let's go to UCLA. Let's just click this one. If there's one closer to you or you just like one better, they're not really any different. So here you can see the different versions of R for download. Um, there's these top versions here that we're going to stick with today. And there's also the source code. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the difference. So we have the Linux, Mac, and Windows versions here that come with the installer. That's going to be the easiest and the quickest and the most painless way to get R on your system. But if you're more of a hobbyist, you're just curious, or you like to compile your own code, go ahead and get the source code. And I probably don't need to tell you anything else about what to do. But for our purposes today, let's just click on the second link to install for Mac OS X. Linux users should click above. Windows users should click below. So we'll click to download. Now, it's really important that you download the right version for your operating system. If you download the wrong version, R will not work properly. You'll see here there's several different packages. The top package is the one that you're most likely to be downloading. This is 3.4.1, the most recent stable release. It's for El Capitan. The next package, 3.3.3, .3 .3, is for Mavericks. 
And this final package, 3.2.1, is Legacy and is for Snow Leopard and Mountain Lion. If you do not know what version of OSX you're running, you can click on the Apple at the upper left corner and look in the About menu to find out. So go ahead and select now the package that best suits your operating system. I'm going to click on R3.4.1 because my machine is running El Capitan. So I'll go ahead and click here and you'll notice that my download will begin. So I've got about two minutes left on this download. I'm gonna pause and we'll return when the download finishes. All right, so my download's all finished up. So I'll just give you a second to locate where yours went to. And let's go ahead and open up our downloads of R. So I'll click here on the package and this should open up an installer. So let's go ahead and install R on our machine. You can see that we have a version number 3.4.1, which is identical to the one that we downloaded from the R website. You can see it also has a special name. Release 3.4.1 is called Single Candle. This isn't anything in particular special, except that it comes from a Peanuts cartoon. So let's go ahead and click continue. Let's read through this if we'd like to. Continue, accept the license. There's nothing hidden in here. There are no hidden costs, fees, bloatware for your computer. It's just a simple open license. There's no risk to you. Uh, let's agree and let's install it for all users of this computer and let's install and enter our password. Third time's a charm. <laughs> and it'll just go through the process of installing everything. Great, so it only takes about a minute to install. And let's go ahead and move that installer to the trash. So there's just one more step for us to take before we can start messing around with R. And the next step is to install R Studio, which you can see I have up in this other tab here. So you can navigate directly to www.rstudio.com or simply search for R Studio in your search bar. So I want to make it clear that our studio is free for the purposes that we need to use it for. It is open source. Now they do have larger packages for corporations and for people who need more advanced capabilities from R, but there isn't any kind of limitation based in R Studio that you're going to see as a beginning or even as an intermediate user. Um, a lot of people use this in their everyday work. So let's go ahead and download our studio by clicking on that link. You can see a comparison between all the different versions of it. And of course, we're going to get the free version. So go ahead and click on that download link and you'll be brought to this massive list of different installers. Again, you're given these two different versions. This is similar to the R installer where before we were given these two versions at the top, the pre-compiled with the installer that we used and at the bottom, the source code. So what we want to do here is use the installer. If you, again, are more adventurous or more experienced, go ahead and use that tarball. A lot of these are going to be for Linux distributions. There's a Windows option. There isn't any tarballs for Mac. 
So the installer for Mac here is for OSX 10.6 and greater. There's just the one Mac link, so you don't need to worry about versions of OSX like we did for R. Go ahead and click this. It's also important just before we start that you don't do this out of order. As RStudio says, it requires R 2.11.1 or greater to run. So here we go, and you'll see this is a little bit of a smaller download, and it's finishing up right now. This comes in as a disk image. Go ahead and navigate to that disk image and open it. So we get our verifying. If you're on Windows, it might look a little bit different. And as we generally do on Mac, what we're going to do is go ahead and drag that to the shortcut to our applications folder. So I'm actually just going to open a new finder window here. I'm going to navigate to applications and I'm just going to drag it in this way. This is another way you can do it. So we're in the applications folder and let's scroll down, find our studio and open it up. So scrolling down here, we actually can see another program that was installed by R, but this is not the program we want, so don't get them confused. We actually want our studio. So let's double click on this to open it up. Now when we open our studio, we might see several kind of prompts like this. So our studio is asking me if I want to install some developer tools. Um, generally, when our studio asks you if you want to install something, just go ahead and do it. You don't have to pay for any of it. Some of it may you know, require disk space or something like this, or you have to go to the App Store. In fact, if you want to install Xcode here, these are Apple's developer tools, and what will happen is, is it'll reroute you to the App Store here, where you'll need to get it. Um, this is fine. Basically, you know, not just R, but our studio and other languages or development environments are going to need these tools as well. And this is just part of what happens when you use open source software is they depend on other open source projects to run. If you ever are going to do collaborative software with anybody ever, you are going to need the git command. Go ahead and do it. I'm not going to do it right now, but you should do it. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Well, welcome to our studio. Um, you've got your console, your environment, your history, files, plots, packages, help, and viewer. What is all this stuff? Well, to find out, you'll have to tune in to the next video. But for now, congratulations. You have successfully installed both R and R Studio on your computer. Thank you for watching my video today. Again, I'm Elizabeth Esterly coming to you from the advanced space at UNM. Thanks again for watching and tune in next time to find out more about using R and R Studio, where we go into some details about the R Studio workspace and how to get started with actually programming in R. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.